yes here we are as the christmas lights on the front of my house twinkle in such a jolly merry way welcome to english addict live as we approach the christmas season yes christmas is definitely on its way It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go with Mr. Duncan wearing his Christmas lights and also his silly tinsel as well. Ba 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 bum ba 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 Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so here we go then oh I don't know where to start to be honest I suppose I should start here that's always a good place to start that's what I find anyway so here we go are you ready for the big season yes Christmas is approaching on Wednesday it will be Christmas Day yes definitely I can definitely say that Christmas is coming <laughs> It is a different one today slightly different things are not as they usually are but to be honest with you when are they ever when is when are they ever normal to be honest with you when is this normal <laughs> I don't think this has ever been normal ever so a little bit different today can I just say that I don't like this tinsel on my head it doesn't look very good does it it's it's a little plain so I'm getting rid of that and instead oh I think I will have a little bit of red tinsel here we go I think this this looks much better oh yes yes I really feel as if I'm in the Christmas spirit now <laughs> so are you ready for Christmas I suppose that should be the big question I'm asking at the moment I know that many people right now are preparing for the festivities of course not everyone celebrates Christmas I do realize that so if you don't celebrate Christmas it's okay you are still welcome maybe you can find out some interesting things about the Christmas season who knows so I've decided to make my studio look very festive although I, I do feel as if there isn't enough snow can we have some more snow that's better oh yes I like this the snow is really falling here in the studio however unfortunately outside guess what <laughs> can you guess what is not happening outside it is not snowing in fact there is the view right now out of my window it does not look like Christmas is coming <laughs> it looks like early spring at the moment outside it's quite mild it isn't too cold and we have no snow as you can see there is no snow on the ground whatsoever nothing not a single flake of snow has fallen over the past few days which is a little disappointing I'm going to be honest it is a little bit disappointing slightly disappointing that we've had no snow I, I can only blame it on global warming I think that might be the reason why we are having no snow at the moment so it's live English English addict in fact on the 22nd of December 2019 as we approach not only Christmas but also the end of this year so how has it been for you how has 2019 been for you has it been a good year or has it been an okay year so maybe nothing too bad happened and maybe nothing too good happened it was just average 
so my year hasn't been too bad it's been a busy year i must admit i did a little bit of traveling this year <laughs> and also lots of other things as well including many many live streams and in october if you remember i did 31 days of live streams i still don't know how i did it but i did it and i was very happy that i managed to do it as i did so you are welcome to join me today let's have a quick look at the live chat shall we before i introduce today's special guest yes oh so it's not just me today i also have santa's little helper who will be joining me in a moment to co-host today's english addict i'm sure you are very excited to find out that mr steve will be here today joining us on the live stream and also talking to you on the live chat he has a lot of things to read out to talk about including a lovely christmas poem to help us all get in the christmas mood because of course <laughs> let us not forget oh my goodness christmas is definitely on the way Christmas is coming it really does feel like fun and excitement is in the air ah isn't it a great time of year and it doesn't matter if you don't celebrate Christmas it really doesn't matter at all because you can still have a good time hello to Zenek hello Zenek guess what you are first on today's live chat can you believe it I am gobsmacked so congratulations to Zenek Zenek Zeba and also to Flower Espoir you are second on today's special pre Christmas English addict so when we say pre Christmas it means before so pre means to be before something so this is the pre Christmas English addict with myself Mr Duncan in the United Kingdom which will soon be the North Korea of Europe that's all I'm saying about that I'm sure Mr Steve will have something to say about it so here we go then here he comes he's just waiting outside the door very patiently to come in ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it is my pleasure to introduce today's co-host on this English addict it is Mr Steve <laughs> oh Mr Duncan hello <laughs> how are you and hello to everybody out there I'm quite excited today because it's been a long time since Mr. Duncan has allowed me onto the live stream. Oh, are we, are we, are we really starting that already? Hello. Now, I never. Can I just point out that I never sacked Mr. Steve? Mr. Steve had other things to do. I don't know if he's going to talk about these things because he's been very busy this year preparing a new, <laughs> a new venture something that is going to be doing next year but he might not talk about it the other thing i want to mention steve is you could have had a shave what look at this, this well yeah i never shave on a sunday you know that mr duncan anyway the lights will filter it all out and i will look beautiful look um, i've got a little friend with me oh well, hello hello <laughs> what's his name do you know it's uh, it's uh it's a snowman it's snowy the snowman snowy the snowman and we love him very much don't we because we put him out as part of our christmas decorations every year i feel as though i'm leaning yes, I, come back <laughs> i don't know where you're going steve you've, you, only, you've only just arrived and you're leaving already you've got to position me in front of the camera okay this is snowy the snowman we've had him for years haven't we this is snowy the snowman and this snowman has seen many things some things that have slightly disturbed him in fact he's going to tell you now one of the things he saw 
no, no, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe for another time. Okay. Well, he probably saw it up in the loft. Okay, that's where we keep him. Bye, Snowy. Bye. Merry Christmas, everybody. See you under the tree. <laughs> we keep him in the loft, don't we? In the hot loft. Yes, and sometimes, uh, sometimes I keep Mr. Steve in the attic as well. Well, talking about the attic, Mr. Duncan. Talking about that's where uh, up in the loft or the attic. Attic. That the roof space, yes, <laughs> uh, is where we keep all the stuff that we don't use very often, like Christmas decorations. We were like talking lots we, of junk. We were talking about this yesterday. We were talking about the attic, and we said the attic, which is above your house in the roof space, is a very useful place, but mm. it's also a very annoying place. Why? Why is it annoying, Steve? Because it's out of sight. And the phrase, the, 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 the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. So if you don't want to throw something away or you just shove it up in the loft, <laughs> uh, you put it up there, you know it's there, but you can't see it. So it's just junk. So it's a place for keeping junk, basically. OK, then. And but we have boxes and boxes of junk up there, don't we, Mr. Duncan? We do. But the reason I was mentioning it was there's been a funny smell in my office room upstairs. A funny smell. It's not me. Mr. Duncan said it was me. I was blowing wind all day, but it wasn't. No, because what you tend to get in your loft in the winter as the cold months approach, all the mice, <laughs> they find the little holes and they nest up in the loft. This is a good revelation. And uh, <laughs> I have to put this happens to everybody's house unless you've got a very well sealed roof. OK. Uh, so, you know, the mice are up there because we go up there and you can hear them scratching around. So I put out poison. Now, we had this discussion last year and people were, were berating me for poisoning these mice. But if you don't, the trouble is they t they nibble in and gnaw into all your into electrical circuits and can cause fires. So I've put some poison up there and I think one of them's died and it's against the roof ceiling and it's smells of like dead animals what in my a, office room i must say we we, we were nice. trying to get into a seasonal spirit a seasonal mood here but steve has started off the live chat with steve and myself with with talk of an infestation of mice in the attic that's and very all, that's very christmasy i've poisoned them they've died up there and now they're smelling out the house yeah. i suppose it serves us right how, how about this lovely christmas card did you show this one the other day i did OK, then. That's, but that is nice. That's very <laughs> shiny. Most of the Christmas cards I've already shown you, see. It's 3D, that one. I did. I like the Look. way. Yes. It's homemade as well. We know who that's from. So okay. thank you very much. This one's from a neighbour. Have you shown? I bet you haven't shown this one. Mr. Merry Duncan. Christmas to Mr. Steve. I can't wait to see you again in the. Oh, OK. Oh, then. no, I've had a card like that, Mr. Duncan. I've oh, no, that's not it. Where is it, Mr. Duncan? Look at this one. This says, ho, ho, ho. And there's a cat on there, which I don't particularly like. But anyway, maybe we could get a cat, put it up in the loft and it could kill all the mice. Yes. I wouldn't have to poison them then. So this says, ho, ho, ho on it. And this is from a friend I used to know years ago. And he says, lol, <laughs> lots of laughs. Uh, lol, will we be meeting in 2020? Hmm. Because don't you say that in lots of cards to people every year? You write to them and you say, oh, shall we meet up sometime this year? And it goes on and on and on and you never meet up with them. So actually in People This Year, I wrote, I wrote, don't want to see you in 2020. Mm, go away. Because <laughs> the opposite may happen then. This is a subtle uh, hint. Please, please get out of my life. But this one says, call me. Oh, call me. It sounds to me <laughs> as if. It sounds to me as if Steve is on a promise. And they've given their uh, mobile number. I won't say who it's from, but there's a kiss after the name. Yes. Okay. Let's just say an old flame. <laughs> this is turning out to be a very strange Christmas live stream. That's a fun one, isn't it? That isn't is, that nice? That is fun. We like fun Christmas cards. Fun. Uh, a snowman with a carrot for a nose. Yes. Who's that from? I've never oh, seen from our friend Martin. So so what do what do snowmen normally have as as their nose? <laughs> they can have lumps of coal, can't they? No, the, no, the coal is their eyes. Okay. So, yes, I think I think Steve has never made a snowman. 
I don't think he's carrot. ever he's never done it. You you always use little pieces of coal for the eyes and for its nose you always use a big long hard juicy carrot always and normally you put a little hat on his head as well to keep him warm on those cold winter nights and quite often you'll put a little scarf and of course as we know uh, all snowmen has got a scarf all yes. snowmen are heavy smokers so that they quite often have a pipe as well they do that's right despite all the warnings that, that they will have severe health problems later in their snowman life or they melt because of the heat from the pipe i thought that was a joke but never mind go oh, on but the flat ears so is that, is that a joke steve <laughs> well it was an attempt at a joke but you can tell it again forget it it's past the time's past i want to look at the comments to see if anybody's welcoming me mr duncan well there they are in front of you well it's all new because mr duncan since i've been on mr duncan's updated <sighs> everything i used to be able to see all the comments there but now they're sort of there they're closer to you because oh, of your right. your terrible poor Brilliant. thank you very your much your poor eyesight uh Oh, right. It's too close, Mr. Duncan. My eyesight is I can't even read this, but it's can I if I do that, will I will I upset everything? <laughs> uh, I hope all is well. Happy Christmas. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. It's a bit wobbly, Mr. Duncan. It isn't wobbly. <laughs> Steve, I don't know what's wrong with you today. You've got a wobbly phone. Hello to Christina. What a lovely snow that is. What lovely snow. What lovely snow falling behind you. Because snow is plural, you can say what lovely snow. So you don't have to say what a lovely snow. What lovely snow falling behind you. I love it so much. Not too much, because too much means it's more than you want. So you love it so much. And we do, but unfortunately, we're not going to get any snow this Christmas because it's too mild. No snow. We'll probably get lots of rain. We've mm. had lots of rain. The back garden's flooded. Yes, we've had a lot of rain over the past few days. Today is quite nice outside, though. If you look outside, it's actually quite nice outside. It looks, it looks very nice. There it is. There is the view right now. The sun is out. Everything looks lovely out there. It looks like springtime. It doesn't look like winter. It looks like spring and there is another view. That is a live view outside at the moment, Steve. Isn't that amazing? It, it's live outside. Just like we are live inside. Yes. And uh, Chris says hello. Lots of people are saying hello and hello to you. Uh, Cecilia says, I love your posh accent. Ooh. Well, of course, I, I could speak even more poshly. Yes, poshly. if you'd like me to. <laughs> more poshly. Uh, but I've toned it down because I think people don't like to hear me speak too poshly. They think I'm from the aristocratic classes. Yes. Okay. I like to think I am. But okay. unfortunately, I'm not. This has, no <laughs> this has nothing to do with the Christmas. This is a Christmas show, by the way. So it's English Addict Live for Sunday. The 22nd of December. Christmas is on its way. Are you excited? Are you hoping that Mr. Mr. Santa Claus will come down your chimney and empty his sack under your Christmas tree? There's no answer to that. I've got all sorts of things prepared here, Mr. Duncan. That's OK. We're not get, we're not going now. It's OK. <laughs> Don't worry, Steve. Steve always worries far too much about the time. It doesn't matter. We can stay here all day. It doesn't matter. There isn't a time limit. <laughs> well, I shall get very hungry, as you know. OK. Do you know, I've forgotten that just how tiring it is standing uh, on your legs. Yes. <laughs> well, at the time I've got I've got aching calves already, what, Mr. What, Duncan. What do you normally do with your legs? <laughs> well, yesterday, of course, uh, I was put through my paces. What? Put through my paces. Okay. Which means that you're you're, you're tasked with doing something quite challenging. That's it. So Steve uh, Steve did a bit of manual labour yesterday. We went round to visit your mum. So we went to my mummy yesterday. By the way, just in case my mum's watching, I'm pretty sure she isn't. I think she's probably fast asleep now. Hello, mummy. Nice to see you yesterday. And Mr. Steve was very busy yesterday. He helped to tidy my mum's garden. So I didn't help. I did it all. Well, OK, so <laughs> but it was still helpful. It was helpful. I did it all. I took my tools along with me, my hedge clippers, 
okay. and various garden implements, which many of you have seen me use okay. uh, live. And, uh, well, your mother's garden, nobody's tended to it at all. <laughs> OK, great. Uh, for... Sorry. Welcome to Shaming Mr Duncan's Mother. Yes, but I, I'm not blaming you because you live along. It would take no. you. No, to, yeah, you don't drive, do you, Mr. Duncan? So to get to your mother would take you two and a half hours by public transport. I didn't say you were blaming me. Whereas I can drive you there in about 45 minutes. OK, this is all fascinating. And uh, so there I was. And I had. To, I thought, look at the state of this garden. Last time we were there, I'm going to clean it up because it's, it's stressful. For an elderly person to to look at all those weeds, <laughs> I know it's my mother's the same. So I've, we, that's my that's my Christmas good year deed. So I feel better now. That when you it's like charity, you're, you you always feel better if you do some charitable work. It actually makes you feel better. Your uh, your good year, your good year Christmas. My Christmas, your good my year. Christmas deed. Is that, is that anything my to Christmas do? deed. Okay then, great. So sorry, mum. For, for, because Steve <laughs> has sort of kind of shamed you now because of your really... Well, your mother can't do her gardening because, you know, she's of a certain age. I know. OK. And, uh, Why are you just mentioning everything that makes people seem untidy and old? Well, I'm just saying I helped out. You've got no room to talk. So Trust your mother will look out. The, has, she, has she phoned up and thanked us, by the way? Yes, yes. Well, I was expect if I'd done that, we you We only know, went yesterday... <laughs> I was just thinking, if I was being paid to do that, I think I would, it's about £60, I think I should be paid for that. Okay. But I'm not going to charge your mother, so don't worry. OK. <laughs> this is all very Christmassy and festive. She gave me a kiss when we left. That's enough. OK, then. <laughs> and it wasn't on the mouth. Pardon? <laughs> uh, does your... It says Lilia... Uh, uh, do your family or friends yeah. ever check on your live don't, don't streams? Forget, yeah, don't forget to say hello to the Hello, viewers. Lily. I have said hello. You didn't. I, I, well, I just said read hello the, to no, lots of people. If you read a comment, say hello to the person first. It's, All right. It's courtesy. Hello, Lilia. That's better. Haven't seen you for a long time, Lilia. Where Where have you been and what have you been doing? Uh, that should read... Uh, do your family or friends ever check on your live stream? Sorry to correct you there, but we, this is an English channel. <laughs> uh, no, is the answer to that. I don't think they watch us, do they? Uh, I don't think anyone who we know in real life watch this. And can you blame them, really? Well, Martin does. Martin does. And he may oh, yeah. well be watching now. If he is, say hello. Mind you, he's probably working. Okay. So, you know. Well, that was that was 17 seconds of the live stream. Well spent. <laughs> but he might be. He's the only person that we know who watches. He's a good friend of ours. And that was his card. <laughs> that that was, was his friendly fun card that he sent to us. OK, then. Um, what, a, what a sad thing to say. He's the only person we know who watches us. That might be the saddest sentence. Everybody You're, else is ashamed that of us. That might be the saddest sentence <laughs> you've said today. I think most of our families are actually ashamed of us that we do it. They're embarrassed because they don't like they don't like to display anything in public. <laughs> what? Uh, they don't. <laughs> what are they? Well, our family. Sorry. Most our families are quite Ooh. shy. They don't like to. You don't uh, have to shout. They don't like to uh, to think that we're doing anything in a public way. A public uh, way. That well, how might do you, how embarrass do you go, the family? How do you go shopping then? What do you go? Do you go sort of under a, under a big plastic yeah. bag? What I meant was that we're talking to the world, you know, millions of people across the world, and uh, so that's embarrassing. For, if your family's concerned about what other people think of you and their family, they might be embarrassed to think that somebody could be watching that might say, "Oh, that's your son yes. on there. Oh, he's a bit of an idiot, isn't he?" Uh, it might embarrass the family, so that's why they don't like well, to admit that we see, do it. See, every time you say something, every time you say <clears throat> a new sentence, you kind of unpeel another question that I want to ask. Why, why would they think you were an idiot coming on here? I mean, what is what is idiotic about this? It looks so sensible. Now, the thing is, it's very different to... It's not traditional, is it? What we do, what you do, rather, this isn't is traditional. an unusual occupation puts you in the public eye and most people don't like to be in the public eye you know there and, are there uh, are far f there are far stranger ways to to earn your living there are far stranger jobs than this you could be working on a farm where you have to pleasure some of the some of the bulls you see that's a weird job isn't it 
Yes, but it's a farmer. It's a tr- traditional job. If you said to your family, well, that's it. You see, if somebody asks one of our parents okay, then. or our sister, what does your brother do or your sister do? Or brother do. Um, well, I'm not my mother's son. <laughs> I'm not my mother's brother. And uh, they have to say, oh, they, they do live streams on YouTube. You see, it, your, what your mother wants to be able to say to friends okay. that they know is, oh, oh, my son's a doctor. He's oh, a, my son's a solicitor. He's a an brave, architect. Ooh, OK, then. <laughs> Are you just going to go you through You know, it? something that's show offable show offable pa- parents like to show off about their children so today's special word is show offable so i mean my main job my mum when i say my main job is sales and of course sales in the uk is not an occupation that is looked up to it, it's sort of oh sales oh you know it's not it's not a it's not a fancy job it's worse than being a youtuber Exactly, yes. it is. In the United States, of course, it's completely different. Sales people are looked up to, but not in the UK. It's seen as a sort of a, um, not a very nice job, uh, really. But, you know, if it, your mother wants to say you're a solicitor, a doctor, okay. a teacher, something like that, something that they don't want to say that they, they, they teach English on YouTube. Why? Which actually, I know, but you see, in 20, 30, 40 years' time, oh, okay. it may be something that is very... Um, Highly thought of. Respected. Respected. But I'll be dead then. But isn't that true? Don't your parents, they they like to show off about you, so they don't like you to have professions that don't create this air of sophistication. Respect. Respect is the word I'm looking for. Yes, a respectable job. So being a YouTube celebrity like me is not respectable. Working as a brain surgeon or an aircraft pilot flying a plane yes. through the sky is, is respectable but being on youtube dancing around with a santa claus hat on or, or lots of tinsel around your neck is not respectable yes would your you, anybody watching now if you did this what would your parents say tomek said uh, wants me to elaborate hello tomek oh hello tomek wants me to elaborate on the word berate Yes, go on then. If somebody berates you, it means that they are uh, criticising you. Yes. So harsh comments. Harsh comments. So they are making harsh and hurtful comments. They are criticising you. They are berating you. They are mm. trying to make you feel small. Yes. And and insignificant. They berate you. They put you down. They criticise you. They say things that make you feel small and insignificant. But it could be justified. It could be a justified... Uh, somebody could berate you justifiably. You could have done something to hurt somebody. Uh, but somebody. Could, but you can also be berated for something that is not justified. Mm. Say, for example, a job that you like doing that other people don't think you should be doing. Mm. Uh, so I, get, I get berated a lot for doing this. They all think I'm a real weirdo. But nobody on here does. That's good. Uh, why, yes, um, Tetra, I think it's Tetra. Oh, that, I can't read this, it's too small. It's Tetra n- N. It's, it's Netra. Netra. It says, why do you address each other as Mr? Why be so formal and just called by first names? Oh, this is a very ah. long story. I don't think I've got time to tell you this story. Let's just say in China, when I worked in China as an English teacher, everyone called me Mr. Duncan and it kind of stuck. So yes. from that time to this very second that is happening right now on your screen, I am Mr. Duncan. So, of course, Mr. Steve becomes Mr. Steve. Mr. Duncan becomes Mr. Duncan. Mr. Mr. Snowy the Snowman becomes Mr. Snowy. Because in some countries, the, the surname comes before the forename, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, uh, in this country, the surname comes last, so... Uh, you wouldn't, but, but in 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 China, the they think that your Duncan is your surname because it comes before your last name. So that's why you're called Mister Duncan in China because they think that yes. Duncan is your surname, but it's yes. not because so in the UK that, it's the other way around. When we say surname, we mean family name. Yes, family name. So, so we do it as a bit of a, not, not a sort of a joke. It's like a tradition because that's what that's what they used to call you in China. And uh, so you call me Mr. Steve. It's a bit of a joke, really. Mm. So that's the answer to that. We can't use the uh, the name that my mum used to call me. 
We can't uh, say we can't say Mr. Shitface, unfortunately. That's nice. <laughs> oh. Yes, there we go. Right. What's next, Mr. Duncan? Uh, Yasser says, I think Mr. Steve's dialect is a real challenge to me. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you mean you can't understand me? Am I talking too quickly? You're not the only one. Uh, <laughs> um, the Duke of York. My son is the Duke of York. Yes. Oh, yes. It we is, don't talk about the Duke of York anymore. It is the Queen we? saying that. So they are pretending that the Queen, it's Massimo saying, the Queen is saying, my son is the Duke of York. But we don't talk about him anymore because no. he's been very n naughty. Allegedly. Yes, he's the least favourite royal at the moment. <laughs> if you're following the royal family, um, then uh, you will realise that the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, is uh, no longer in favour. OK. In favour. <laughs> if you say somebody is in favour, it means that they are... Like Mr. Duncan, they are somebody who is looked up to, somebody no, who is. That's it. They are. They are. Revered. They are a person you want to know and socialise with. That's it. Somebody who may uh, have achieved something that uh, you haven't, and you respect them for that. Uh, so uh, yes, in in favour. Yes. Whereas if you're out of favour, it means nobody wants to know you anymore because you've probably done something mm, shameful, maybe, or committed a crime or upset somebody. Uh, so if you're out of favour, it means you won't be invited to parties uh, with friends and you won't be invited out to places because you're out of favour. And you never want to be out of favour. Uh, yes, yeah, so if Mr. Duncan was out of favour, nobody would watch him on YouTube. But you are in favour, therefore lots of people are watching you. I don't you know. Are, I think that is that is quite deb debatable. You could be, <coughs> another phrase is flavour of the month. OK, Steve, stop uh, there for a second, because guess what? For those who've just joined us, Christmas is definitely coming. <laughs> So it's live English as I choke to death live on the internet. Well, you need to have a glass of water standing by, Mr. Duncan. I do. I have your glass of water. Oh, that was mine. That was mine. And now Mr. Duncan's stolen it. Mm. Uh, do you want me to show your viewers some Christmas presents that I'm going to be giving to family members? OK, then, because we do have a special video coming up soon as well, where I talk all about Christmas and some of the traditions as well. But Steve would now like to show you some of the gifts that he's buying for his friends this year. Come yes, on, just Steve. Just a couple. So we know that our families aren't watching. We've established that. Definitely. So revealing what I'm buying them for presents for Christmas is not going to in any way spoil their, their surprise. So here's something. I'm going to buy this one for my... I'm not going to say who it's for, just in case she's watching. She won't be watching. My sister. Uh, we don't buy Christmas presents anymore, but it's her birthday uh, at the same time as Christmas, just a few days after Christmas. So I'm going to buy her this candle. There we go. Oh, I, <laughs> Mr. Duncan, I, I need some help. Uh, this is a, a, a traditional gift. I would say it's quite traditional for, for Christmas, but I know my sister likes candles. So uh, thank you. I don't know where you went then, just when I needed an assistant. So it's in a metal container to make it safe. And there's a flavour on that, vanilla spiced orange. Flavour? Yes, because well, if you take the lid off... You can't eat candles. Ah, but when it's burning, Mr Duncan, when you light it, it oh. will smell of bin, uh, vanilla. Of <laughs> vanilla. Okay. Vanilla and orange. But when isn't, it's, isn't the that, scent in the air will be it. created. So it's not really flavour, is it? Because you, 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 you right, taste, you taste flavour. Well, you and, might help, or you might. And you smell... Ooh. I just uh, invert that. There we go. That's you can very, see there's a candle. That's very strong. So a little, very strong. A little candle. A lot of people seem to like candles. I've heard that your sister often lights 
candles in the house uh, uh, yeah, yes she does and a lot of people a lot of people light candles in their house now you've got to be very careful because every year there's hundreds of fires uh, I read a, a statistic about this that because people uh, it's very popular at the moment and in vogue to light candles at home because it does create a nice atmosphere but you've got to be careful <laughs> that they are secured and away from flammable substances like your curtains uh, otherwise you could uh, find that, that your house is on fire <laughs> so you've got to be very careful with candles and my mother is uh, definitely does not like candles in the okay. house so we so have established that steve's sister likes candles and also mr steve's mum does not no because of a safety uh, aspect uh, because when my when elderly people people in their eighties, for example, grew what? up, what? there were used to be lots of fires in houses because you used to have to have open fires, and if you didn't have electricity, so you had gas burners or candles for light, and of course there would be uh, with naked flames, naked flame. We always say naked flames, don't we? Flames because flames don't have clothes. <laughs> <laughs> a naked flame it just means a flame that's just there oh well, in the open air it means unguarded unguarded not behind glass naked and it could set fire to things so okay. we don't want that <laughs> so um of course chocolates everybody buys chocolates for their loved ones particularly their mothers maybe at christmas but i know my mother will like this uh which is soap soap don't don't push it forward because it goes out of focus now this is expensive soap go. so don't don't move it forward because this this particular camera steve is locked focus so the focus is locked on this camera and the technical details so you, no but you have to well you hold it then but this really does stink it's it's what well, stink is not <laughs> the word. Oh if you say something God. stinks that is too that is too strong when you say something has a, a smell or a scent you should say that has a strong scent because if you say it stinks it means it's a horrible smell the word stink means a horrible smell like like rotting flesh yes or or, or rotting mice rotting in, mice up in, in your loft yes <laughs> so i'm buying these soaps because uh, uh, Gosh, i know my mother will like these will she i know she's not watching so she, she won't be a, you know can i, I just be spoiling any surprise can i just say can i just say i know that these are going to be put into a drawer the day after Christmas, the day after Steve gives them to his mum, these will be in a drawer and they will never see the day, the light of day ever again. No, I think she will use them because my mother likes to have a bath, you know, a couple of times a year, probably. <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, somebody said here, a May La Quang says, Mr. Steve's eyes are green. You want to say they're not is green. If it was one eye, you would say is green are green and look like the hulk yes thank you very much so steve has green eyes they're actually blue but then mr duncan has probably adjusted the color balance so i look like i've got green eyes in fact i think a green green blue gray i would say they used to be quite blue when i was younger but they faded with age yes it's uh, the it's <laughs> the cataracts <laughs> it's probably yes probably yes <laughs> So that's a couple of presents I'm buying and I'm buying Mr. Duncan. Oh, now I've got to be careful what I say there. Yes. Well, last year it was a year's subscription to Grinder. I don't know. I don't know what's getting me this year. You're being very rude, Mr. Duncan. What? You're being disgusting and rude today. I don't, I don't like it you, at I all. Don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, are you going on vacation during the Christmas anywhere? Um, no, we're not. No. Christmas Day normally, traditionally we send, we spend Christmas Day by ourselves we have a lovely peaceful time on christmas day although we will be doing lots of socializing i suppose that's a good word socializing when you socialize you meet people you go to people's houses maybe you meet somewhere for a meal we will be meeting up with steve's mother on her birthday because it's also her birthday just after christmas so your mother has a very strange situation where Christmas arrives, but also her birthday arrives just after Christmas. And my sister's as well. Yes, it's really strange. It's very crowded. 
around but around Christmas. It means I've got to buy presents, not just for Christmas, but also for two birthdays. But in a way, it's quite good because it gets them out of the way. I don't forget about them during the year then, because I know they're all around Christmas. So I've only got to remember I've only got to remember yours in August. That's good. Uh, and uh, that doesn't matter. Oh, a praxine. I don't. What does that mean? It doesn't matter what country we're talking about. The powerful can do what they like. That's very true. Uh, I don't know what you said then. I don't know, but I agree with it, whatever it is. I think what that person is saying is... That's Luis Mendez, isn't Luis, it? Luis, yes. Luis Mendez, a big bonjour. So uh, I don't understand. It doesn't matter what country we're talking about. The powerful can do what they like. They yes. can. I think what that means is if you are wealthy and powerful, quite often you can do whatever you want. I think that's the point. The rules don't apply to them, the okay. normal rules. That's good. So when it comes to global warming, they can they can buy as, as many as much rubbish and, and as many cars and houses and go on as many planes as they like because they're rich. The mm -hmm. rest of us will, will have to have to be careful what we do. <laughs> So expect a lot of social commentary from Mr. Steve today. I'm going to rein it in, rein it in. Because normally he gets very carried away. If you rein something in, it means you re reduce what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's also a bit of a pun. And we haven't even mentioned... Rein it in. We haven't even mentioned Brexit. Reindeers, you see, reins. The reins on the reindeer, rein it in. And it's raining outside. Different spelling, rein it in. Three ways of using that word. <laughs> No comment? Oh, never mind. Uh, oh, Martin's here. Martin's here. Martin Munn. Do you recognise this, Martin? <laughs> well, <laughs> he probably does. <laughs> it's your uh, fun card, which we like very much. Yeah. And we've just been showing it to, to millions of people across the planet. <laughs> Maybe not just this planet. We're, it could be being broadcast across the galaxy, couldn't yes. it? There are some aliens somewhere sitting in front of their whatever their television looks like, going. <laughs> which basically means, what the hell is this crap? My grandfather had <laughs> grey eyes. <laughs> Sadly, he was the only one with such a beautiful colour. Yes. My eyes, my, my eyes are deep brown. Ooh. Yes, actually, when you see, because we, we were round at Mr. Duncan's mother yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you were reminiscing, weren't you? Reminiscing. We were. With your mother. That means that you, you're talking about the past and recalling past events, mm -hmm. looking at photographs. And that's what you were looking at photographs. And in every photograph, you can always tell it's Mr. Duncan because you can just see these sort of hollow <laughs> brown dark eyes sort of piercing out of the out of the photographs even in black and white hollow. you have very distinctive eyes look can i just say <laughs> can i just say that if you describe a person as, as having hollow eyes that's not a compliment yes palmyra we're not talking about brexit anymore because it is now a reality that's it's it. going to happen it's we can happen. do nothing about it whether we agree with it or not it's said, all over that's what i said earlier i uh, said i said the uk will soon be the north korea of europe <laughs> i think we'll be the the, the, the sort of singapore of, of, of europe i think that's what we'll be <laughs> uh, but, well i think that's what the aim is you know <laughs> But uh, yes, no, we're not talking about. Although we went to see some friends, didn't we, on Friday night and had a had a, had a curry. We've been out. We've been out gallivanting all over the place this week. It's been a busy week. Chinese with Martin on Wednesday, curry with some other friends on 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 uh, on uh, Friday night, and they are arch remainers. They are very when I when we say arch remainer, that means stuff. absolutely no doubt about it. If you say someone is an arch okay. something. Just just slow down because even <laughs> even I'm losing track of what you're talking about. And I'm here. If you say someone is an arch something, like an arch remainer, it means that there's no way you would ever change their mind. They're absolutely 100% dedicated to whatever that is. Um, so uh, they are absolute remainers. But he, he shouted out across the... Because the, uh, he'd had a lot to drink, hadn't he? Who had? These friends we went out with on Friday. I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling. And uh, I said I said to him, it's all over now. There's no point in us arguing. And he stood up and said, it's not over. We've got to keep fighting to stay in Europe. We've got to keep fighting. It's all over. There's nothing to fight for now. But he was drunk. Had rather a lot, hadn't he? Yes. But we won't go into that. I, of course, remained completely sober because I was driving. 
And okay. Mr. Duncan did as well. What What does this have to do with Christmas? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So we are going to have a quick look at one of my video lessons because we are here for a while today, quite a long time. So I hope you are feeling very comfortable. It's a special live Christmas addict pre Christmas. So Christmas is on the way. So now we are going to take a look at one of my English lessons. And this is a lovely English lesson that will tell you all about Christmas, what we do during Christmas and why we do it and then a little bit later on mr steve is going to give us a lovely christmas poem aren't you i will try my best to give it a good rendition meanwhile here is the lesson <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, we will take a look at a festival that comes once a year. It is a time when many people get together to enjoy each other's company. It is a magical time for all but especially for children and the young at heart. In this lesson, we will share the experience of Christmas time. The festival of Christmas is a religious one. In fact, most of the holidays that exist around the world are based on the observance and following of one religious ceremony or another. The word holiday itself derives from the Old English word meaning holy day. Christmas is part of the Christian religion. The Christmas festival celebrates the birth of the Christian Messiah or Saviour. The Christmas celebrations have changed considerably over the years with new ceremonies and celebrations being added as the years have gone by. Christmas time is a fun season for children of all ages because this is the time when Santa Claus comes to visit. He is a jolly gift giver who every Christmas Eve travels all away from the North Pole on a magic sleigh pulled by flying reindeer to drop off presents for all the good boys and girls around the world. Not forgetting those big boys and girls as well. Santa Claus is also known by the name Father Christmas. He is a good humoured fellow dressed all in red with a big white beard and a jolly laugh. Ho, ho, ho. So, if you have been good this year, perhaps Santa Claus will come to drop a present down your chimney. If there is one thing that Christmas is well known for, besides Santa and snow, it must be the music that is played during this time. For some reason, people love to sing during momentous occasions and festivals birthdays, weddings, even funerals. There is always a song to go with an occasion and Christmas is no exception. A song that has been written for Christmas can be called a carol, a Christmas carol. The word carol is another word for song or chant. Christmas carols usually have a religious theme. They can also be called hymns. A hymn is any song with a religious theme that is sung in church. You could describe it as a prayer set to music. If you are a regular viewer of my lessons, then you will know that I love food. And Christmas time is one of those periods when food becomes quite a feature. We often see taking a meal as a good way of socialising. 
you can eat together with one person or many people from a cozy romantic dinner for two right up to a huge party for many you can eat formally at a table you can eat informally from a selection of food that has been placed out this is called a buffet formal dining normally means that you are seated at a table and the food is served to you by the host or by a waiter if you are eating in a restaurant eating is important for survival but it also serves as a great way of bringing people together the type of food eaten at Christmas is very specific the main meal is meat and vegetables the traditional meat eaten is turkey a turkey is a very large bird so it is perfect for feeding a group of people the turkey is normally roasted in an oven it is covered with oil or fat so as to help it cook you baste the turkey this stops the meat from drying out as the turkey cooks you must check that it is not drying out you can use the natural juices from the meat to pour over the turkey while it cooks if you undercook it will be raw and not safe to eat if you cook it too much it will become dry and the meat will be tough and that is the last thing you want as nobody likes a tough rubbery turkey you can also put a paste made from seasoned breadcrumbs and herbs inside the turkey before cooking it this is called stuffing after the main meal there is normally a sweet or dessert served the Christmas pudding is what is traditionally served the Christmas pudding is a rich nutty fruity food flavored with spices and alcohol there are different varieties of Christmas pudding then there is the mince pie these are normally small individual pies filled with mince meat although it is not actually meat the sticky filling is made from dried fruit and seasoned with spices lemon juice and alcohol not everyone likes these types of dessert including me here in the UK many people will sit down after lunch to watch Queen Elizabeth give her annual speech to this country and the Commonwealth nations around the world this happens on every Christmas Day at 3 p.m. of course these days you can watch the Queen's speech on YouTube at any time there are many fun traditions that go with Christmas one of them is kissing under the mistletoe mistletoe is a type of parasitic plant it normally lives off the water and nutrients of trees a parasitic thing is something that attaches itself to another thing for survival it is called a parasite one thing lives off another thing there are certain types of parasitic insect too a tick is a type of insect that lives off the blood of an animal such as a dog or a sheep we can describe a person as a parasite if they use others to get what they want such as money or favors the act of kissing under the mistletoe started off around the 16th century in England before that mistletoe was seen as a symbol of male fertility the real origin of the kissing ritual is unclear as there are a few possible explanations however nowadays it is common for people to steal a kiss at Christmas with a stem of mistletoe hanging above them look I have a piece of mistletoe here would you like a kiss
maybe instead of a special hello i could send out a special christmas kiss under my big piece of mistletoe this is a christmas cracker it is a novelty item that helps to create a festive atmosphere you normally pull a cracker with another person inside the cracker there is a small prize and a party hat also contained in the cracker is a joke more often than not these jokes are very old and corny a corny joke is obvious and predictable but we all still laugh along after all it is christmas it is normal for gifts to be exchanged on christmas day quite often the presents are placed under the christmas tree which is of course where santa claus leaves his too the gifts are normally opened in the morning but of course they can be opened later as the christmas guests arrive It would be fair to say that the way in which Christmas is viewed and observed has changed a lot over the years. Some people feel that the religious element has almost disappeared. For young people, Christmas is about parties and presents. For the older generation, the religious theme is still important. Many people usually attend late night church services just before Christmas Day arrives. These days, people have a choice as to how they celebrate Christmas. There is the traditional way and the modern way, or in some cases, both. What is interesting about modern Christmas is that even those who do not follow any particular religion, such as myself, still get involved with the festivities. I would not class myself as a religious person. However, I still enjoy the atmosphere that Christmas brings with it. The colour, the joy, the food, and of course, the chance to share time with those you care about. I hope you have enjoyed this festive lesson, and I wish you well, wherever you are in the world. This is Mr Duncan in England, saying... Happy holidays to you. And I hope you enjoyed that. A lovely lesson, a festive lesson, all about the Christmas season. <music> doop, doop, doop. It's Christmas, just in case just in case you didn't realize that it's Christmas look it's Christmas <laughs> because we have Christmas lights on at the moment also joining me in the studio yes he is back by popular demand it is Mr Steve hello Mr Duncan hello to Mr Duncan's wonderful viewers across the globe Mr Steve is still here I am. I'm not going anywhere. Can I say thank you very much to Helena for your lovely donation on the live chat and also Eric as well for your amazing sticker and also your donation as well. So thank you very much to Eric and Helena for your super chat donations today on the live chat. And for those who want to get in touch, by the way, I have an email address. I also have a Facebook page and if you want to make a donation through PayPal, you can do that as well. Mm, this is a special live stream and it's English Addict on Sunday the 22nd of December Christmas is on its way I'm very excited I wonder what Santa Claus 
is going to bring what will he come down my chimney with in his sack i wonder i i have no idea i've got a big surprise for you mr duncan this christmas really you're getting me nothing exactly <laughs> That's what I, that's the punchline. I've never heard that's that joke. That's what I was going to say. I've never heard that joke before. That Look at was this. that was hilarious. Look at this card here that we've had. I can't, I'm having trouble orientating it. Orientating it. I mean, he's getting it correctly positioned. You always have difficulty uh, with your orientation. That's a nice Christmas <laughs> card with with a donkey. Look at that lovely donkey. It's smiling. It's got a Christmas hat on. Uh, of course donkeys are very traditional at christmas are they not mr duncan yes we think of donkeys because uh, there is a donkey in the nativity story in there the is... stable yes so a donkey also carried the virgin mary on its mm. back really so, yes Right, I didn't you must, know that, you Mr. must know Duncan. that. There is a song all about little donkey, little donkey, little donkey. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to take baby Jesus to the stable to be born. By the way, talking of donkeys, yes, we were driving to my mum's yesterday, and we noticed at the side of the road. Something very unusual, something I've never seen before. There was a dead donkey. Yes. <laughs> I kid you not. I don't know why I'm laughing, but it was so unusual. It really caught our eyes. There was a dead donkey by the side of the road yes. just lying there. I've never seen such a large dead animal before. I've seen lots of dead rabbits and dead squirrels and pheasants. Dead, dead pheasants. But I've never seen a dead donkey by the side of the road before. And there was. It was just lying there on its side. Somebody must have just thrown it out of the back of their car or something. So someone or ran some, over it. I think someone somewhere is wondering where their donkey has gone. And I can tell mm. them now it's it's on the main road coming into much Wenlock and it's not moving very much. I thought, are you sure it was a donkey? Because I thought it could have been um, a deer because there's lots of deer in the forests around here. It was a donkey. It was a donkey. I know the difference between a donkey and a deer. But we were sort of flashing past at 100 miles an hour. Well, you were, but I wasn't. <laughs> I know. You said, oh, look, there's a dead donkey over there. And I, I nearly crashed. I saw it the night before and I looked again and it was definitely a do It's definitely a donkey. It's well, it's Christmas. I know the difference between a donkey and a deer. But, you know, you only maybe had half a second to see that, that, it. That's like saying, do you know the difference between a squirrel and a rabbit? They're very different. Yeah, but at 100 miles an hour. Yes, OK, <laughs> you've said that seven times. Do you, want, do you want another point on your licence? People are talking about food a lot because, uh, of course, food is a central part of Christmas. It's a central part of living, <laughs> staying alive. Uh, turkeys a little known here's, here's, a, here's a fact because there are vegetarians of course watching us there are of course uh, and uh, uh, somebody said they were vegetarian Pachu uh, is vegetarian uh, one turkey how many people eat so what you what I think you're saying there is if you buy a turkey how many people will that feed or serve or serve well you can get different sized turkeys, mm. of course, but uh, small normally uh, you can't really get one that would serve less than six people. You can get very small turkeys. They're this big and you just pop them in your mouth. You can chew them and uh, they sort of um, go down very nicely. But you can get big turkeys as well, can't you, Steve? That's it. You can get turkeys to feed 12 people. They're as big as Steve's head. Six people. Anything between six and 12 people, I would say, you could get a turkey for. Yes. And, uh, yeah, quite big. That uh, big. And that is the problem. If you if there's only two of you, then it's very difficult to find a turkey that is small enough that is worth buying. Because if you buy a turkey, even for six to eight, I think the smallest turkey you can buy is between... It would feed six to eight people. Sixty-eight. Six to eight oh, I see. people. I was going to say that. That's a big turkey. But of course, what that means is, that if you're only two people <laughs> in the household, that is going to be a a lot of money to spend. Uh, you're either going to have turkey for several days afterwards, mm. which a lot of people do. That's a lot of turkey. Uh, and turkey is a very dry meat. It doesn't taste particularly nice two days later uh 
it's very dry it dries your mouth out there's i don't know why but it just does it's it's not everybody likes turkey so we don't buy a turkey anymore because you have to spend probably 40 50 pounds on a turkey 50 quid yeah, that's how much a, a good quality turkey will cost you now Bloody hell. Uh, and that's going to feed six to eight people and you might if there's only two of you you will throw half of it away so we just buy a chicken now because so, chicken actually tastes nicer, I think. I know. You I'm can not, buy a small chicken to serve three, you I'm, know, two, three people. I'm not paying 60 quid for a dead turkey. That's crazy. I'd rather I'd rather chase next door's cat down the road and catch that. They're fine if you've got a big family and lots of people visiting, which, of course, a lot of people do. They have all their friends and families round so they can buy a nice big turkey and they will use it all up after it's been of course it takes ages to cook a turkey yeah. and of course you might not um, be able to get it in might not be able to get it in your oven yeah. you need a big oven to cook a big turkey yes so we don't buy them but a lot of people and here's an interesting fact i've got some interesting facts about christmas mr Duncan. they better be interesting well in the uk apparently we consume 10 million turkeys what on christmas, christmas day time. Yes. On Christmas Day. Christmas Day. 10 just... million turkeys are cooked in the UK. On Christmas Day. On Christmas. Yes. 10 million. 10 million. Turkeys. Turkeys. On Christmas Day. Well, there are about 65 million people in the UK. I don't there? know. I haven't counted them. I think there are about 65 million people in the UK. So there we go. It's going to feed between up to six people so I've, there we go i've tried counting everyone in the uk but they keep moving around i think it might be i think it's is it, are we 70 up to 70 million yet in the uk i can't remember i have no idea it's i between, think between 65 and i 70. think over the the next five years i think i think the population of the uk will will start to drop a lot so 10 million turkeys and for some bizarre reason in the u.s where there's about 260 million people, they only use 22 million turkeys. I'm not sure if that st statistic is correct, but why they would only use double the number in the US, I don't know. Yes. Maybe, uh, I don't know why that is, but maybe it's true. Maybe, maybe they have lots bigger turkeys that serve yes. uh, more people. Maybe their turkeys uh, have conjoined twins. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of birds that are being specifically bred to be slaughtered at Christmas. If you're vegetarian, you will find that statistic horrifying, yes. I would say. And also if you're a turkey, it's very <laughs> horrifying. You wouldn't like that statistic, would you? The turkeys don't like that statistic. <laughs> and uh, what are, what's the average cal calorie intake that a, a man or a woman would consume on an average day would you say Mr. i thought Duncan? you said these were interesting are oh, they are this is not interesting okay i'll just tell you so an average man or woman will consume between two and three thousand calories on an average day but at christmas apparently on christmas day the average calorie intake is seven thousand so that's two to three times what you would normally consume because you're eating turkey you're having christmas pudding snacks ice cream chocolates nibbles all sorts of things peanuts if there's one thing i love at christmas it's having a nibble people are consuming vast quantities of calories which is why people put on lots of weight over christmas and then decide that they want to go on a diet in the new year yeah because you imagine the christmas festivities are going on for a week aren't they because then you've got new year as well so over that week people are consuming probably to i would say twenty thousand calories more than they normally would so that's you've got a that's a lot of pounds around your waistline mm. you end up looking like father christmas so people traditionally and <laughs> um, very often go on big diets in the new year uh in order to shed some of the weight that they've put on over christmas yes but of course after the new year many people will make their new year's resolutions and quite often one of the most popular new year's resolutions is to lose weight in the new year anna says according to catholic religion we mustn't eat meat during christmas eve mm. i didn't know that uh, we don't eat very much meat anyway uh, but yes um mm, yes yeah, so that's uh, yeah the vegetarian yes uh interesting fact about vegetarianism that i i read recently they've done a huge study on on the health benefits or, or or the perceived health benefits of vegetarianism and it does seem to be better than meat eaters but uh 
apparently vegetarian vegetarians suffer more strokes according to this study uh people who eat meat have more heart attacks and people who, who are vegetarian tend to have more strokes so merry christmas to so, all <laughs> vegetarians out there enjoy your strokes they think that could be because maybe they're lacking in vitamins because you have the so maybe you have to, you know, you've got to be careful as a vegetarian that you sup, you, you get all the correct nutrition, okay. all the correct vitamins and minerals, I'm really which wondering. you can only get from meat. So you have Sorry, to have supplements. How are these uh, Christmas facts? Well, I've, I don't know, I'm just blabbing on, aren't I? What the I, hell you know? does that have to do with, with Father uh, Christmas coming down your chimney? Somebody did ask a question about a question about Father Christmas coming down the chimney. Yeah, what 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 does Father Christmas do? How does he deliver presents? Somebody asked. If you don't have a chimney. Yes. Well, he knocks at the door. He's very polite sometimes. Or he just shoves everything through your letterbox. He's magic. So if he doesn't see a chimney, he finds another way in. Do you want to know why we have Father Christmas? Steve. I'm no. Talking, I'm Go talking. on. Here he is. So this is actually the real Father Christmas. Did you oh. know that Father Christmas was, was originally known as St. Nicholas, who was a fourth century bishop? And he lived between 270 and 343 AD. And the day is celebrated normally on December the 6th in the West. And the habit he had of giving presents secretly gave rise to the tradition, the, the traditional model of Santa Claus. So the origins of Father Christmas and Santa Claus come from St. Nicholas, who was a fourth century bishop. Did you know that, Mr. Steve? I do now, Mr. Duncan, and thank you for that uh, that fact. Mm, so there we go. So that was an interesting bit of information. You see, I have some interesting information. I'm not sure what that was. Chris oh. says that in the Philippines that they have a uh, roasted pig. OK, then. And and uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, ham, which is sort of from a pig yes it's cured pork uh is is something that we also have with the turkey not us we won't be having that uh because we're, we're more vegetarian actually than meat eaters aren't we we're, we're, we're part time we eat meat when we go to a restaurant but we never really cook it at home yes uh there's a word for that uh that's very interesting yeah okay thank you for the lesson i will join you next sunday uh, anna's going that's Lena. Lena, sorry. Hmm. Uh, yes, yes. What? Could you picture a turkey that feeds 69 people? No. No, that would be a very big turkey. That would be something from uh, <coughs> from prehistoric times. <laughs> did, did, might... Sorry, did you think there was a dinosaur turkey? Well, what, don't forget, what... but well, birds come from dinosaurs, so yeah. maybe there was a giant turkey. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in in the times of the dinosaurs, that was big enough that would feed sixty nine people. Well, that's why that... sixty nine. You've chosen there because I said it. I'm not sure. Oh, did you? You said six two nine. Six two nine. Yes. 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 Six to nine. Six people. seven eight or nine people. <laughs> not sixty nine people. We are really. <laughs> that would be a big turkey. Okay. We are we are verging on over explaining that. Yes. I was going to say in Jurassic Park they shouldn't have bought the uh, they shouldn't have brought the tyrannosaurus rex back to life they should have just re reanimated all of those giant turkeys imagine that you could have a dinosaur turkey at christmas the only problem is of course you couldn't get it in the oven and of course you you would have to spend ages stuffing it somebody asked earlier and i can't remember who it was mm -hmm. have we been to india somebody asked us they're from they are from india and they asked us have we been to india and uh no we? we haven't have we and i can't find it on here now uh but is this a fact if you're from india watching now mm -hmm. according to some uh interesting facts about christmas uh, it says uh, on this list that there is a town in India called Santa Claus. Oh. Is this correct? Mm. Is the question I'm posing to anybody now watching in India. Have you got a town there called Santa Claus? Mm. Because this came off the Internet. It says it's a fact. Is it a fact or is it somebody having a laugh? Yes. 
Uh, because you know about things on the internet you don't know whether it's true or not you don't so anybody watching from india is there a town called santa claus is there yes you were talking about saint nick there mm -hmm. saint nicholas or saint nick yes chris crimble that's right uh the 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 uh the current version the sort of fat bearded man okay it's a very good impression <laughs> uh was developed by the coca-cola company that is absolute rubbish. Yeah, well, I, this website's obviously I've got all these facts from. Is that you know, absolute rubbish? Then? You know, there is a myth that Coca-Cola created the image of Santa Claus, and it's not true. The, there are many older images of Santa Claus and many early images, way before that terrible brown fizzy drink was invented. Yes, Lilia, omnivore is somebody that eats animals and plants eats anything yes. and we are in fact as as creatures as animals human beings are omnivores yes. uh, we are designed to eat a whole variety of yes. foods hence that's why our teeth are yeah. like they are look at the teeth the teeth uh, the teeth prove it you have you have molars at the back for for grinding nuts and seeds and you have vegetables you have incisors at the front for cutting into meat ripping meat apart you even have canine teeth like dogs so all of our teeth are designed for different things some of them are for chewing vegetables and some of them are for biting and tearing into meat so biologically we are our bodies are set up to be at their most healthy when we are eating a wide variety of foods both a little meat some vegetable nuts seeds plants all that sort of thing mm. and if you give up any of those food groups so if you become a vegetarian and you give up meat or if you are a meat eater but you don't eat many vegetables you have to supplement your diet because over a long period of time you'll become unhealthy because uh, human beings we don't we have to get virtually all our vitamins and vitamins from food we can't some animals can make vitamins in their bodies but we can't and you only get all the vitamins you need by eating a wide variety of foods and if you cut out one food group like meat you have to supplement your diet quite often or know exactly what you're doing to get the replacement minerals and vitamins from other sources vegans have even more of a problem because vegans don't eat eggs and eggs are a great source of protein and vit and and certain vitamins so you've got to be even more careful as a, as a vegan that you're getting all the correct vitamins and minerals nothing to do with christmas but certainly on christmas we will be eating a wide variety of foods will we not mr duncan yes merry uh, christmas merry christmas everyone <laughs> well according to this yes uh nepal Oh, right. OK, no. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not very good at handling the equipment, I'm, Mr. Duncan. I'm really enjoying Steve trying to use my little phone. Uh, Tetra says Santa Claus in Indiana. Uh, Indiana, America. <laughs> so it's not India, it's Indiana in America. Where's that? Indiana. It's in America, the United States. <laughs> not <laughs> India. Whatever you do. well, it says India here. I printed it off. Okay. So whatever you do, don't go on to don't Google fun facts about Christmas. And the top one that comes up is obviously rubbish. I am starting to wonder where Steve got this information from because most of it is completely wrong. Well, I, I think ten I think ten million turkeys probably is right for the UK. That does sound about right. That sounds about right. Yeah, it does. According to this, if you're in a relationship, yeah. We all know, isn't it funny at Christmas time? Mm, mm. Uh, your emotions become heightened. You become more easily upset. There tends to be more arguments, family arguments, and things like that. Because for people that don't normally meet up together are suddenly thrust together at Christmas time. According to this, two weeks before Christmas. Yeah, for, for, from the website that, that is just. Let's assume it's correct. Let's assume it's correct, Mr. Duncan. Because everything so far has been rubbish. Uh, two weeks before Christmas is the most popular time for couples to break up. So we've missed our chance now because obviously <laughs> it's only four days to Christmas. So I've missed my chance to break up with Mr. Duncan. There's still time. Uh, so two weeks before Christmas, a lot of couples break, break up, presumably because I would imagine 
that they've been thinking about it for some time. They don't want to break. They've been. Oh, I'm going to break up with this person. I want to break up with them. Uh, I can't do it too close to Christmas because they've got to have time to get over it. Because I'm going to feel bad if I break up with them, say two days before Christmas. So they break up two weeks before because it just lets them off the hook, doesn't yeah. it? You know, the worst thing is when someone dies that you know near your birthday. You know, because your or birthday, Christmas. your birthday or Christmas. So if someone really special or near to you dies near Christmas. That's it. Christmas is ruined forever. You are That's never true. you are never going to enjoy Christmas ever again. Well, so isn't because it? every time Christmas comes along, everyone's happy and excited and they're feeling really, really happy because Christmas is on the way. But you're feeling miserable because all you're thinking about is is the dead person. And every well, that's it. If a loved one passes yes. at Christmas time, it is so, particularly sad because you will always Christmas is associated with a happy, jolly time. And if everyone's having happiness and jollity and, yes. and you're remembering a loved one that's died, yes. then that's going to be very difficult for you. Yes. And I always think when you read the news at Christmas and a few days before Christmas, there's a serious car accident and people have died. That, that must be very sad for the parents and relatives because their Christmas is always going to be blighted. They're always going to remember this very sad thing. Well, it's his reality, Mr. Duncan. Happy Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas. Well, you know, just so if you are going to die, it's not all please, happiness. please don't die before anyone's birthday or around Christmas. Try and do it sort of in, I don't know, late March. <laughs> because no one cares about late March. No one ever talks about late March or, or early September. No one really cares about that because that's sad enough already. We have enough sadness in the early part of September already. We don't want any more. Well, there we go. Pachu uh, says about recommending Christmas music. Oh, OK. I'm going to talk about Christmas music. Are you? Yes. I've got a, a, I've prepared some, some information on recommended Christmas music mm. or music that's often associated with Christmas. But I wanted to mention a few more of these uh, facts here oh yes the facts the the the, the, the facts facts <laughs> the facts facts or uh, facts i'm using my air quotation marks because these facts might not actually be true let's assume they are uh so to visit every child on christmas eve santa Obviously, has a big job on his hand to go down <laughs> all those chimney pots. He certainly does have a big job. A lot of houses, aren't there? Uh, he would have to travel, apparently, 3,000 times the speed of sound and visit over 800 homes per second. Well, that's possible. Uh, in order to get all the presents delivered. He probably, he's probably uh, got one of, one of... You know when they got rid of Concorde? He's mm. probably got his own Concorde, one of those planes that can go at supersonic speed. He's got a very busy job, hasn't he? Mm. Uh, his sack must be huge <laughs> talking about uh, you're being very rude today Mr Duncan I'm not being rude, rude. but if he, if he is delivering presents to all those kids he, he must have a huge sack I'm going to ignore you Mr Duncan and, uh, and mention a few biblical facts because you know I like biblical facts yes what? Um, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense well uh People talk about the three wise men, don't they? They Christmas do. A lot. The three wise men, apparently. Yes. Uh, maybe someone will correct me here. Yeah. The Bible never mentioned a number. Uh, it just refers to the wise men. So mm. where can somebody look this up? Where did we get the idea that there were three wise men? Mm. I mean, obviously, they didn't exist at all. Yes. By the way, <laughs> but, you know, this is all... you're not watching any wise men at the moment. <laughs> we, we are the two unwise men. And uh, as, as apparently the Bible, huh? assuming you believe it, the assuming Bible? you do. What do you mean yes. the Bible? What does that mean? <laughs> doesn't mention a date for Jesus's birth. <laughs> the Bible? It doesn't mention a date uh, for <laughs> like, his birth at all. In fact, <laughs> many people assume it probably happened in the spring. But for some reason, we celebrate it on the 25th of December. But there's absolutely no evidence that assuming Jesus did ever exist, okay. you know, whether you believe it or not, 
if he did uh we celebrate it in on the 25th of december but there's no evidence anywhere it's not mentioned anywhere certainly not in the bible that that was the actual date well you know they they moved christmas just to annoy all of the tree worshippers and yes, all of the pagans that's so it. originally they reckon they think all of the historians and the people who study the bible closely they they've said that it's probably summertime where when mm. jesus was born and they moved it they moved it to december because there were lots of pagan rituals during december so they moved it right after the solstice the shortest day when everyone is out running around in the fields naked that's true that's what they do during the winter solstice and the summer solstice maybe not the winter one because it's probably too cold you would shrivel up but yes apparently that's why christmas is on december the 25th because it was moved to annoy all of those pagans and uh, that is true that is true yeah. it's a fact so we yep yeah. uh, a question by patchu why are the christmas hats red that's because of that what you showed earlier yes uh saint nicholas this guy uh that's the one because he there we go he's got a red hat see uh and so he's the painter uh, uh, patron saint of christmas mm -hmm. uh and uh he's got a red hat so therefore that's why we've got a red hat i that's don't know where the, the the white bit comes from i think that's sort of snow it's maybe his beard it could be yes. his beard is white yes yes mm. so that's why it's red because saint nicholas from all that time ago had a red hat so keeping up that tradition uh i don't know what mr duncan's are doing there i uh, was agreeing with you that was oh, my right, okay. that was my very affirmative nod yes at least he works only once a year see so he gets all his work out of the way in one night i suppose he's having to make presents for the rest of the year isn't he over the next few uh, moments we are going to look at some words that you can use at christmas time somebody says here that they think a turkey and the chicken are the same thing they Sorry. are different are we do do are we doing two different live streams here <laughs> are you doing your own live stream they shall are I, different chickens I, and turkeys shall are i different. just put a black line down here and you can do your live stream and i'll do i'll do my live stream they must be related but they are different they are different species aren't okay, they then. turkeys are much bigger that's good yes i think we've i think we've exhausted the subject of turkeys we really have so some words very quickly we're going to go through these words steve hopefully here are some words that you can use around this time of year some positive words because we've had a lot of negative news during 2019 would you agree yes that's it have. that's all i want that's all i want yes you shouldn't <laughs> ask me a question mr duncan i may <laughs> elaborate yes you may elaborate but in this case you may not festive Steve, yes. when you think of festive, what do you think of? Celebration. Yes. A festive time of the year. Yes. Festivities. Yes. Festivities. Uh, usually associated, I would say, with Christmas, would you? Yes. Christmas festivities. So any celebration, any festival, and that's really how the word comes around. So a festival is a time when people celebrate, they, they get happy about something. So we describe Christmas quite often as a festive period. You get festive, you have a festive time, you are festive. So it's a great word. It is a good word that we often use around this time of year. We talk about things that are festive. So all the things that are associated with that period of time. Here's another one. Bing. Jolly. Jolly. <laughs> Jolly. You I seem, thought it said lolly. <laughs> you seem to have difficulty reading that. Well, I thought I thought the J was an L. Oh, okay. Jolly. Yes. Jolly. Hoo, 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 hoo. Yes. Okay, I'm then. jolly. Happy. Yes. Jolly is a, is a sort of it's it's a type of happiness, isn't it? Yes. It means that you're laughing a lot and very loudly. Ho, 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 ho. I'm jolly. Yes. A person who is fun to be with or around, we will often describe them as jolly. So a really good, happy, joyous person, a person who is fun to be around and maybe a period of time that is fun to have and to be involved with jolly we can have a jolly time 
Santa Claus is often described as being jolly because he he's always happy he's excited because it's Christmas and it's the one day of the year that he gets to work <laughs> fun that does say fun Steve fun what do you think of when you think of fun you think of things that are enjoyable things that you like doing something that is exciting as well I think so fun exciting you normally associate fun with children children like to have fun, fun. so they're doing they're, they're they're doing playing games that sort of thing okay. having a, if you have a fun time it means probably as an adult you're yes. doing things that you might have done when you were a child playing games things like that okay uh, <laughs> yeah just things that you would do as a child really that's associated with children i would yes. say would you say well not not necessarily but we're having a fun time yes. we're just we're not worrying about what people think about <laughs> us we're just doing whatever we like blowing up balloons yes. <laughs> running around on the on our on all fours <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> blowing up balloons that looked like you were smoking a joint we're having a fun time now aren't we we're just we're just <laughs> talking about silly things smoke blowing up a, you don't blow a <laughs> blow up a balloon like this <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. It wasn't. You, you get very red when you blow up balloons, don't you? <laughs> you certainly do, and also when you smoke a joint. Fun. So that. fun things. Fun. Joyous. So of course the word joy is in the word joyous. So this is the feeling of being happy, having the feeling of joy. You are joyous. It describes a person who is being happy, a happy person, a joyous time maybe a festival that is taking place that makes lots of people happy it is joyous we are having a joyous fun time on the internet amongst other things cheerful i think sometimes in life we meet a person who always seems cheerful a lot of people say that i'm always cheerful which is of course is true however would you say that mr steve is always cheerful would you say that i am today you've gone on rants haven't you on the live stream you're not always cheerful i mean somebody that's always happy positive outlook on life um yes hmm. what about cheery cheery a person who is cheery person who's cheery is just happy yes yeah, cheery happy. happy happy a person who is quite often happy they always have something nice to say something positive optimistic very similar a person who always looks on the bright side always look on the bright side of life a glass half full type of person always look on the bright side of steve optimistic so an optimistic person always looks on the bright side of everything glittery so you might say that this is very glittery sometimes you might have <coughs> you're supposed to say bless you when somebody sneezes you say bless you okay. i didn't i need a bless you give me a bless you the only thing on my mind is why are you sneezing i'm sneezing because of the glitter <coughs> <coughs> Choo. Uh and yeah. this is something we've Sorry. noticed, you Whether know. I'm still talking about the word glittery. I know you're still talking about glittery. Let me just finish this. Glittery. So something shiny, sparkly. Go on then. I what I was going to say was that there was talk last year of banning glitter. Come on to the camera glitter so people can from see cards. You. I just so think it's do you have cards with glitter and then you open it and you get these sparkly bits of glitter, glitter. all over you and you you can't get rid of it mm. and then you see it on your face you rub your face and then people oh you've got glitter on your face mm. they were going to ban glitter they were talking of banning it from christmas cards yeah. no, i think i think that was gary glitter <laughs> i think they were going to ban Gla gary glitter so i'm looking for a card that's got lots of glitter on and there's another one there, there there's glitter on the edge of that card from martin there and then you rub it and it comes off all over your hands yeah. and you can't get rid of it can you it's so, there for months so please if you are going to send cards to mr duncan that's me by the way or mr steve can you please make sure that there is no glitter on the cards remove the glitter okay so take it off see look 
Four people said, bless you. Thank you very much to Julia, Eric, Chris and Flower. Yeah. I was more worried that Steve might be coming down with, with some disgusting cold. We don't want that before Christmas. No, well, you gave me one the other week. You gave me a stinking cold. I did. A stinking cold. I did indeed. Yes. Horrible. Mm. So thank you very much. Okay. Mr Duncan didn't say bless you, but four people did. Glittery. Sparkly is another one. So you might describe this tinsel as sparkly something that's very shiny and sparkly something that catches the light yes it catches the light and it shines it's sparkly you might describe the lights on my body something that's bright bright and shiny oh for goodness sake so shiny i'm trying to get these pieces of paper apart i really sometimes you stuck them with glue haven't you mr duncan twinkle oh sorry but i'm just but i'm just spark but i'm just shiny Wait there, Steve. Twink. So twinkly. 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 So something that is twinkly. Something that just shines uh, intermittently. So again, like a light. So it may be these lights. Or a star in the sky will yes. twinkle. You see? Can you see the lights here? They are they are twinkly. So they go on and off. They are flashing. Going on and off. Something that goes on and off, probably in a random manner like a star in the sky is very twinkly something that's glowing bright something bright and cheerful you can also use this if you say nice things about someone so if you say lovely things about a person we can say that you are being very glowing about them you are saying warm things about them complimentary if something glows it normally has a warmth associated mm. normally red or orange in colour, yes. a warm glow. The, the lights on the Christmas tree are glowing. Or well, the fire has a nice warm glow. Oh, shimmering. Shimmering, very shimmering. Very similar. So Shimmering. Shimmering. So something is sparkly, shiny. It shimmering. is shimmering. It means it just sort of goes in and out of focus a bit. Mm. Shimmer. It shimmers. The light shimmers. It just sort of... It's random. You can't really focus on it. Yes. Shimmering. You might say the flames are in a fire. They shimmer. Random. It creates a nice atmosphere. Merry. Here we go. Merry. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I went to school with Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Merry. If you Merry, when you use the word Merry, it's normally associated with alcohol consumption yes quite when a, often when a person becomes uncontrollably happy so merry well, you can't you can't control your your happiness you are so merry you are having a great time so i'm that's, feeling very merry i've had two glasses of wine yes so merry happy. often means happy you are overjoyed and that's why we often say merry christmas merry christmas but for some reason, it's associated with drinking alcohol. Mm, I don't know why. Uplifting. 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 If something is uplifting, it raises your spirit. It makes you feel good. happy. It raises your emotions. It makes you feel really happy. We, it, is, it is very uplifting. We hope that this live stream is uplifting. well i have some other interesting facts mr Duncan. oh no Here do you want me to do the reading or do you want me to uh... we're doing the reading at the end okay it's not the end yet feels like it <laughs> maybe don't for forget you... we've got tea cakes and a cup of tea well yes uh, is there a time limit <laughs> are we finishing in 15 minutes uh yes we are finishing around four o'clock I like the sound of that because it's getting dark outside. OK, so wh uh, what does that have to do with anything? Yesterday, of course, was the shortest day of okay. the year in the so UK, wasn't it? What does it matter, though, if it's getting dark? Well, I might want to do things before it gets dark. OK, like what? I don't know, run around in the garden, okay. clip a few branches off trees. That is strange. Yes. So yesterday, yes, it was. A, it must be the twenty second today. 22nd. It is the twenty second. And have you mentioned that yesterday was the shortest day of the year in the UK? I did a few moments ago. Okay. The winter solstice, when it is the shortest day. So that means that the Earth, instead of pointing towards the sun, 
it is now pointing us away from the sun so the sun seems as if it's not so close and also it's at a much lower angle so that's why we have winter in the north and then later in the year the the, the earth will go back it will tilt back and then we are nearer the sun oh lovely they are having hot temperatures at the moment in australia can i say hello to all my friends in australia i do feel for you i know it's very hot and there are some terrible wildfires occurring at the moment <laughs> yes of course the closer you live to the equator uh, of the earth the, the the less seasonal is the weather mm. um, and you tend to have the same temperatures all the year round whereas the further north or south away from the equator you will tend to have in the winter you'll have much shorter days in the summer you'll have much longer days yes uh, so. and we've just had our shortest day mm. which probably the sun probably rises probably seven o'clock seven thirty in the morning i have no idea he's never up and so I'm seven th maybe seven a.m and then but the sun's gone down by four o'clock yes well it's it's going down now it's going dark now outside. so we only have about nine or ten hours of yeah. light look outside in the summer in the winter so that's outside now so the the days of <laughs> Where's my voice gone? I'll carry on. So the days are shorter. So we're only getting about nine, about, yes, seven. What? Uh, 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 we're only getting about nine hours of, 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 of light. You have to use your fingers. Nine hours of light during the winter. Steve. Whereas in the summer, <laughs> we will get... Uh, Mm. Uh, eight o'clock nine o'clock that's 10, 17 hours 10 10 so that's a big difference 10 o'clock 11 o'clock that's 12 a big difference yes we only have about mocking me mr duncan we only have about five hours of darkness more than that, more than that. oh darkness and then the wind in the summer yeah right so christmas music we've only got 10 minutes okay do you want me to talk about christmas music yes. mr duncan well the weather outside is frightful but the indoors. fire is so delightful and since we've no place to go let it snow let it snow let it snow is a popular christmas song it's a popular christmas song that's more of a pop song okay if you like classical music anybody out there like classical music if you do there are a few there are well there's lots of christmas carols of course which you would count as classical music probably but there are certain sort of big classical works, as they call them. Uh, and some of the most popular ones, I think the most popular one in the UK certainly is Handel's Messiah, which is a big oratorio. So that's our oratorio is music and voices. So you've got singers, uh, orations, so you've got people singing uh, to music. And Handel's Messiah is a very popular. It's sung a lot all over the UK in choirs. It's probably lasts about an hour and a half, two hours long. It's a long piece of music with a big mm. orchestra and a big choir. And they're hallelujah. They're singing all sorts of uh, well known. It's very well known in the UK. Is Handel's yeah. Messiah? That's the big. That's the big sort of chorus. That is that's hallelujah. The, that's the hallelujah. Big. Hallelujah. Hello. Other people might know uh, Bark, J.S. Bark. So uh, the Handel's Messiah, 1741. So okay. it's very old. You know, when we think of Christmas music, though, we normally think of sort of merry songs. Like yes, I know. Well, I'm getting, getting on to that, Mr. Duncan. We getting on to that. We wish you but a merry Can I finish Christ first, Mr. Duncan? What I'm saying, oh, we are. We could be breaking up now. <laughs> Christmas Oratorio Music by J.S. Bach, 1734. Interesting fact about Handel's Messiah, if you know Handel's Messiah, uh, that although it was written in 1741, and we, it's very popular now, Queen Victoria, in, in the 19, you know, 1890s, she didn't like it. She <laughs> thought it was old-fashioned music in 1890. I thought you were going to say the 1980s. She, she didn't like it at all. You imagine Queen Victoria in 1890... <laughs> saying i don't like handel's messiah i think it's old-fashioned actually i'm imagining queen yeah. victoria in the 1980s and she was saying i don't like that new romantic music it's too loud do you like tchaikovsky anybody watching in russia uh tchaikovsky you're very famous uh, i like uh, it but i can't i can't spell it i can tch uh, uh, 
Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies. Ooh, okay. Uh, is a ballet and a very popular Christmas piece of music. Do, 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 so that's the classical do, side of things. Well done, Mr. Duncan. That is a well-known uh, excerpt from the Sugar Plum Fairies. Uh, fairies? Are you a Sugar Plum Fairy, Mr Duncan? I, I am partial to some sugar, but never a plum. Ah, look at that. Christina has mentioned something I was going to mention. OK. Uh, what well, are you going? Christina, well done. I was going to measure. Look, look at that, Christina. That is a recording of the very famous... Vienna uh, concerts that they have on New Year's Eve or maybe on New Year's Day uh, and it's popular works usually Strauss uh, Viennese music uh, which is a very uplifting fun uh, music concert that they have classical uh, uh, music from Vienna. They have this concert every year and we like to watch it because it really cheers you up and they usually have ballet dancers as well. But so, this, this is Lauren Mazel, but sadly he's no longer with us, is he? No, exactly. That's a recording from <laughs> yes. one of the Vienna uh, we guessed that. concerts from a long time ago. <laughs> we didn't think it was happening. If you want cheering up... This always, isn't happening now, by the way. This want, is a CD. If you want to want cheering up, watch the New Year concert from Vienna. It's yeah. fabulous. It's very yeah. highbrow, of course, but... Uh, uh, it's 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 lovely. So thank you for what for mentioning that, Christina, because I was going to mention that it's, as well. It's sophisticated. Uh, oh well, there's ah. I think Christina's talking about Christmas con. Is this the one you mean, Christina? The one that's usually on New Year's Day. Uh, that maybe they have Christmas concerts as well, uh, but they always have a New Year's concert, which is apparently you have to book up years in advance to get to it, uh, and it costs a fortune to go. Uh, we've never been invited, but. So Christmas carols, I like to play when I'm wrapping presents at Christmas, uh, when I'm wrapping Mr Duncan's presents, um, then I like to play Christmas music and we like to play it, don't we, Mr Duncan, mm. when we're cooking the meal. What I like about that is, is you've just left, all you can see there is, is that and, and the big price label. There's, there's actually nothing that shows what this is. There we go. That's, a, that's better. Christmas carols. Uh, Four ninety nine. Carols are sort of hymns for Christmas time, aren't they? They're choral. Sung by choir. They're choral music, and everybody knows them. Uh, there we go. So here are the popular ones, uh, like "God rest ye merry gentlemen," uh, while shepherds watch their flocks by night. See amid the winter snow, silent night, silent night. Good King Wenceslas, Good King Wenceslas, last looked out on the feast of Stephen. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, uh, oh, uh, away in a manger, <laughs> ding dong merrily on high. I saw three ships come sailing in, the holly and the ivy. Uh, the first, oh well, oh come, ye all ye faithful, once in royal David's city, hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. There we go. That's uh, just a few of the popular carols that we have at Christmas time. Why that says Trinity, carols from Trinity. Well, Trinity is a very famous uh, choir um, that uh, put on a concerts every year. And uh, uh, these are uh, recordings from that particular choir. That's why it says from Trinity. Uh, and of course, there is also uh, the uh, carols from King's College. Which Cambridge. Is, which is in Cambridge. So is that one. Very traditional. This one I like to play because this is was five ninety nine from Asda. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, probably about 10 years ago. So it was very cheap. It's very interesting that the price of these CDs is part of what we're talking about. These, these CDs are very good value for money. They are. And this is lovely. I love playing this one. It gets me in the Christmas spirit, Christmas okay. mood. Uh, God, uh, yeah, we go. Jingle Bell Rock, J 
Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Sleigh ride, I'll be home for Christmas. Uh, the Christmas song, White Christmas by Bing Crosby. That's a famous one. There were three ships. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Bing Crosby, Winter Wonderland, the Andrews Sisters, uh, Jingle Bells by the Andrews Sisters and Bing Crosby. There we go. I love that one. I love playing that. When I'm cooking the Christmas dinner uh, or wrapping Mr Duncan's presents. Obviously, I don't need to play all those to wrap Mr's, <laughs> Mr Duncan's presents uh, because I haven't got that many to wrap. Oh, that's me done. I seem to have spoken a lot today. Anybody want to say anything? <laughs> you seem to have spoken too much today. <laughs> Watching from Kurdistan. What's the weather like in Kurdistan? Please let us know. I am going Ibrahim. to. I'm going to guess hot. Although having said that, at this time of year, you don't realise that it actually gets quite cold in the Middle East at this time of year. It can be very cold and chilly. Vodka man is on. I celebrate every day when I have vodka. Yes. And so you should. Actually, I've, we've got some vodka. We never drink it, but we've got some. What? Merry Christmas <laughs> from Spain. <laughs> Espanol. I, I drifted off then. <laughs> I went into, into my own world. And it was He's often in his own world. And it was lovely. What else do you want me to say, Mr Duncan? Oof, what can you say? I tell you something. We were talking about Christmas earlier with with the food and there is one particular type of food that many people enjoy at this time of year with their oh. Christmas meal. However, this is quite a controversial vegetable. There it is, the sprout. Now, some people like to have sprouts, Brussels sprouts with their Christmas meal. However, there are people who hate and despise Brussels sprouts. Don't you think that's strange, Steve? Yes, Brussels sprouts are, are, are what you call a Marmite food. <laughs> OK. Uh, well, they're, they're, they're a Brussels sprout food. You either love them or hate them. Yes. They're a type of sort of... Uh, they're a bit like cabbage. Small. They're like small cabbages. Tiny cabbages. Uh, and uh, they're very popular to have with your turkey. But they're quite... They can be quite bitter. Um, so... Um, some people like them, some people don't. We like them, but they do tend to have a bit of a side effect. What Do they? Don't they, Mr Duncan? When you eat lots of Brussels sprouts at Christmas, they okay. are well, they are renowned for, let's just say, causing a lot of gas and wind okay. in your digestive tract. Good. It's nice to see Mr Steve is, is heightening the tone. But they do because they've got lots of fibre in them and uh, and all the bacteria in your gut like to feed off this. So they are, let's just say, sprouts cause a lot of farting at Christmas. They are renowned for it and some people like them and some people don't. And mm. I would say probably, do you like them, don't you, Mr Duncan? I absolutely love sprouts. I love them so much I can't get enough of sprouts. They're lovely uh, if you cook a lot of them and then keep them the leftovers and then fry them mm. with potatoes yep. you get something called um bubble and squeak yes and people but, we love it and we have julie julie says i hate sprouts and that's it so some people like brussels sprouts and other people dislike Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. I think Brussels sprouts are so nice. In fact, I can't I can't stop saying Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and you can buy them loose or you can buy them on the stalk. And they're better if you buy them on the stalk because mm. they last longer. Yes. Mm. Guadalupe says, I love the song Jingle Bells, the country version by the Oak Ridge Boys. Jingle Bells, I think Jingle Bells is probably the most popular general Christmas song. So I think a lot of people do like Jingle Bells. Pachu Yadav says that they grow or he or she grows sprouts in my farm. Oh, well, well, that's fantastic. Maybe you can send us some because we haven't bought ours yet. No, we haven't got our Brussels sprouts and we must get them. Judy G hates them. Uh, 
cabbage also. They are similar to cabbage. They're like a, a bitter cabbage. Mm. But if you have if you have that's why you you tend to have a bit of uh, uh, cranberry sauce, which is a bit sweeter on. Yes. It just it sort of goes with turkey. I don't know why. Mm. But we, but what you normally do is you you normally take take the outer leaves off the sprouts. You will cut them on on the bottom so they cook quicker, and then you just simmer them in water. But you don't want them too soft. But also you don't want them too hard either. I don't like hard Brussels sprouts. I like them not too soft, but I, I like to actually eat them without breaking my teeth. Ah, a few people there. Anna says she's never seen the Brussels sprout plant. Oh, I see. Uh, and uh, uh, how do you serve them, says Julie G. Yes. So there we go. That There's the plant itself. So that's what Brussels sprouts look like when they are still on the plant. They're the leaves and you pull them off and uh, and and boil them so you just serve them as a vegetable like potatoes or cabbage whole like that uh, you boil them till they go soft and uh, you just have them as a, as a vegetables like you would potatoes or carrots mm. uh, you just serve them on the plate and they're very traditional at christmas time brussels sprouts i think they're popular because they're one of a few vegetables that are, are are available during the winter months because obviously here in the winter you don't uh, nothing much grows uh, but the brussels sprout plants are, are growing and still growing in the winter uh, and they resist the frosts and the cold weather very well mm -hmm. and so i think they're popular for us at christmas simply because they're one of only a few vegetables that are actually available mm. in the winter months that's it uh, like carrots, and for of, example. And of course, we have missed out the most important vegetable at Christmas time. Oh, what's that, Mr. Duncan? What about the parsnip? Parsnips. Parsnip. You can't have Christmas dinner, Christmas lunch without having parsnips, and you must always roast them. Roast parsnips at Christmas time with turkey, potato, Brussels sprouts thick gravy oh my goodness i can't wait till christmas <gasps> again parsnips are, are still growing in in the winter months which is why they're available mm. uh, and popular mm. uh, and potatoes of course store very, they're not growing in the summer but they 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 store very well mm. and you can keep them all over the winter months and they're always available yep always available steve we are coming towards the end oh it's almost time to say goodbye to you and you and you good question patchy why is it why are they called brussels sprouts i don't know i was thinking that i thought someone's going to ask why they call brussels sprouts mm. i don't know maybe you can look it up and let us know i wonder if it has something to do with where they come from originally it could be maybe they are from brussels maybe they know. are brussels sprouts or brussels sprouts Mm, they might be we are going in a minute i hope you've enjoyed today's live stream two hours today we've done so no no wonder all of my little cartilages in my spinal column are now popping out <laughs> because i've been standing here for two hours i'll push them back in later Ooh, <laughs> there's a there's a <laughs> promise there's a promise i can't refuse <sighs> parsnips yes for parsnips are very nice thank you mr duncan and mr steve it is my birthday on the 24th happy birthday to guadalupe for the 24th which is christmas eve now we are not with you tomorrow we are not with you on tuesday but we might i'm not sure it just depends on what happens whether mr steve gets completely blind drunk as usual because he might be asleep on the floor with with green goo running out of his mouth like like rick rick sanchez from rick and morty so it is he's very similar to to rick sanchez from rick and morty who steve knows nothing about but all the young cool people out there will know what i'm talking about but you don't <laughs> but we might be we might be with you on wednesday christmas How, day christmas day we might we might exciting i make no promises we might also be with you on boxing day now i'm thinking of going into town on boxing day and maybe doing a live stream from the town center 
like we normally do that's traditional now. yes we've done it twice so we might do it this year we will see what the weather is like because the weather is very strange at the moment outside look at the weather at the moment it still looks light even though it is actually now starting to get dark as the sun goes down so we will see what happens there we're not sure at the moment so we will see what happens i hope you have a super super duper christmas if you are celebrating it steve has something he wants to share don't you oh do you want me to do this little traditional christmas reading so steve would like to give you a reading and i will be going just just to the side so you can have center stage mr duncan i'm all nervous now mr duncan you're putting me in the spotlight so you should be you should be nervous right this is a traditional christmas reading uh twas the night before christmas mr duncan's maneuvering me <laughs> into the center of the screen and it's by clement clark moore twas the night before christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring not even a mouse the stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the roof there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutter and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave luster to midday to objects below, when what to my wondering eyes would appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. reindeer. <laughs> With a cold old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donna and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away dash away all and a very merry christmas to you all well, that was nice <gasps> I, I i i especially enjoyed the reindeer <laughs> the reindeer you could find the reindeer yes. in germany yeah that's how they pronounce it there you see that's i hadn't it. made a mistake at all apparently all the reindeer they, they graze along that famous river they do that, uh, that's uh, where they're from exactly they're from the rhine it. that's it they're, 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 that's it mr duncan yes, yes. i got carried away very excited yes. you know what i'm like when i'm performing mr duncan they used to be called rhine valley deer but now they call them the reindeer and that's mr steve's excuse and he is sticking to it well i hope you enjoy that little rendition i've done it before but uh you know it's popular people <laughs> like it he's done it before and better <laughs> so duncan how dare you criticize my performance and yet i did dare i did i no did. presents for mr duncan no sprouts no wine, no jollity, no merity. Well, the only whining will be from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we are going now. Any final words? Uh, final words from Mr. Steve. I would just say uh, whether you're celebrating Christmas or not, have a lovely 25th of December and you may see us. You may not, but you will definitely see us on Boxing Day. Yeah, I think uh, that's true. So whether you celebrate Christmas or not, I'm going to say happy Christmas to one and all. And finally, I will say thank you very much for joining me during this very busy year. I will be with you, of course, before the end of 2019. Can I wish you out there watching at the moment a very Merry Christmas. I am not afraid to say it. <laughs> unlike some people merry christmas happy christmas have a joyous time if you are celebrating even if you're not celebrating enjoy 
the festivities wherever you happen to be watching in the world and of course until we meet again which might be on christmas day or maybe on boxing day we will be live in the streets who knows it is mr duncan and mr steve saying merry christmas and of course until the next time we meet ta-ta ta -ta for, for now, now.